Christian proclamation means that you proclaim Christ. And people cannot understand what you mean unless you explain it a bit more. Um, so you should always try to aim at being understandable. Now, the, the um, high claims uh, that Christians make about Christ, and that's the same with any other worldview. All world, world views come with a claim to universal validity, so, so they will always come with very high claims. Uh, they, they make it necessary for us to give some reason for why these high claims should actually be accepted. So in that, uh, in that way I think that um, rational argumentation will, will be a part of Christian proclamation although not all the time and with every single conversation or every single event you are trying to do, but it is, it is part of, of um, proclaiming Christ to also explain why people should, uh, do, uh, should believe in Christ. And that's what the Church Fathers did, that's what the Apostles did, and that was has, what, what has happened throughout history. Uh, in my uh, doctoral dissertation I came across a man called Peter the Venerable. He lived in the Middle Ages, he was the abbot of Cluny and he um, lived during the time of the Crusades. So that means that uh, the normal thing to do for a Christian at that time was to try to um, fight literally against people who are not uh, sympathetic to your own worldview, um, but he changed his opinion on on the worldview on the Crusades. Um, this means, um, being the influential church politician that he was, I mean he presided over a network of six hundred cloisters and ten thousand monks. Um, he also was involved in the whole Crusade ideology, um, but towards the, towards the end of his life. He must have changed his opinion and he um, saw that it was necessary to engage with Muslims in a different way, not just killing them, chopping their heads off, but uh, entering into a sort of a dialogue. And, but, but such was the climate of his day that he had to justify this approach. You know, he, he writes, um, the, whole, the whole project uh, turned into a book called Contra sectam Saracenorum, against the uh, heresy of um, the Saracens. And he writes a prologue for the Christians. So the prologue was not meant to um, be translated into Arabic and given to Muslim readers. But in the prologue, uh, he explains why he's doing that. And he says that there were, there were severe accusations from, from several people. Uh, and he had to really deal with this kind of um, objection against his project. And he, he explains it very well. So he says, for example, that um, the church fathers did that sort of thing. Uh, they never um, let any error or heresy go unchecked. They opposed every single one of them in writing. And they threw their lances, he says, but the lances were arguments. It was not physical violence, it was rational dialogue, it was argumentation. And the only kind of real violence he mentions uh, is martyrdom. And that's of course not a, a kind of violence that you um, do to others, it's something you suffer innocently. Uh, so that's the only kind of real physical violence that he mentions. And the only part of the body involved is the tongue. So he says that the church fathers did what I am about to do, so I'm allowed to do it as well. This was the example of this church fathers. But he also had the example of Paul. And he says that the church fathers in their turn, they only did what they did following Paul, who also in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 speaks about uh, the, the, the necessity to confront thoughts with spiritual weapons. Uh, not with physical violence, of course, but it's necessary to uh, argue and to enter into rational dis, um, discussion. Um, 
he, Peter the Venerable also explains um, that part of why he is allowed to do that is that he wants to invite his Muslims readers on, to salvation. And this is uh, part of why it's necessary to argue. Because if you invite somebody to trust Jesus, you have to give them reasons why, why they should do so. It's not enough simply to say, say so, you have to explain it. So in that way also rational argumentation is part of proclamation.